shift gear from my first lecture. I'm very glad that I actually uh, uh, that that it, it is at this timing in the in the summer school lectures, because some of what Parta has said a number of times in his lectures was issues of longevity. He looked more at the welfare, at the sustainability, and how longevity counts in in in, in national accounts, or why it doesn't count adequately, and so forth. But the longevity issue was certainly mentioned, and the changes in longevity are major aspects of uh, uh, a major fact. Uh, and I would like to talk about two aspects today and tomorrow. Um, today, I want to talk about the issues of longevity and, uh, and aggregate savings. Uh, and you'll see, I, it, it, talking about aggregate savings, I have to do some building blocks, because aggregate saving depends first on individual behavior, what individuals do about their saving, in particular savings, labor supply, and retirement age, when it's chosen endogenously and then aggregate, and the age distribution also aff is affected by uh, uh, changes in longevity. And so all these macro, if you want to do a closed model, you have to take all these into account. That's what I hope to do in a very simplified form today and talk about savings, and you'll see this is a controversy which has been uh, there for quite a while, but, and, and I'll tell you about that. And then tomorrow I want to talk about other aspects. This, this is indirectly also related to questions of insurance, which I think other speakers will address later on in, among the lectures, in, in the lectures. And tomorrow I'll talk again about longevity, which is naturally uh, 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 related to uh, the particular instrument called annuities. And I will talk about annuities, and there I would like to focus on, and in more generally about insurance, in the face of asymmetric information and, and therefore uh, uh, equilibrium, which is either a pooling or a separating equilibrium, but certainly not the first best. And, and, uh, and I would like to talk there about two aspects uh, uh, tomorrow, namely, namely about, about the, um, the issues of arrival of information later in life. See, the, 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 uh, to anticipate um, the, the, the early, the, the model, the seminal uh, uh, theorem, the seminal work uh, uh, on that. Uh, and, uh, Yari, 1965, was a very stark theorem, and, and extremely uh, uh, clear theorem. All saving with, with, un with, longe with the un only uncertainty uh, is li life expectancy, is longevity, then all savings should be invested in annuities. And that's a very stark. The facts are very different. So this is one of those areas where we have a theorem, very stark theorem, and then the facts are the average age of those who purchase annuities in the U.S. is 62. So uh, the theorem says everybody starting working age should buy deferred annuities and uh, until retirement and so forth. Anyway, so the, the, the question I will address tomorrow is, is the issue of perhaps an explanation to this gap between this theorem, the Yari theorem, and the fact that there are, and, and I want to uh, put the weight on other types of uncertainty, and not only longevity. And it relates also to the issue of what I call residual markets. Namely, if there would, as only longevity, as you'll see, the theorem will be, there's no, residual markets, I mean markets for buying and selling securities later in life, eh, 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 annuities later in life. In other words, you purchase annuities. And you may want to buy additional ones. You have more information. You are, you, well, the information is, is the issue I want to address. You, may, you, you purchase annuities early in life. There are advantages because the adverse selection due to asymmetric information is, is, is very small. If it, uh, there's still some, uh, uh, there could be some, but clearly minimal, right? At the age of 20, when we enter the labor force, we are, we're similar. There are gender differences about life expectancy, but there are. But there are, but but the, and the, and the, as information unfolds over life, the, the clearly the people who purchase and would like to sell perhaps annuities know more about themselves than they knew early on. And the question is, how does the market th that's, that creates a need may create a need for residual markets? And I would like to address that. When you have when longevity is the only uncertainty, you'll see there's a theorem that we don't we don't need those uh, uh, those residual markets. But when there are other uncertainties then we do, and the question is then how 
what, what is the car what the, the characteristics of those markets and also I'll address another issue which is again related to this type of equilibrium with asymmetric information namely that we all knew that that a monopoly may have an interest this was also mentioned at some point here that by bundling bundling products no it was mentioned by Sergio last week you see my memories there were too many conferences around so last week there was a conference Sergio talked about Sergio Hart talked about bundling uh, but in, in a monopoly may have an interest in bundling, right? We have in restaurants, uh, 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 you can buy a, a whole menu or a la carte and, and, and so forth. And that, that's standard. But in competitive markets where the bundling is a robust equilibrium uh, is, has, is, is a question. And I would like to show at least by example that bundling insurance products may mitigate the adverse selection effect. And I will give an, not more than an example and ideas and perhaps some idea about a new financial instrument that will take care of that partially too. So to, to address the issue of longevity and aggregate savings <coughs> and first survival functions over time. What I want to first to say a little bit about the empirics, the, the facts behind underlying what I'm going to talk today. These are survival functions, namely the, the probabilities of surviving to ages, the uh, horizontal axis, and these go over time, over centuries. In fact, if you look at some books, uh, I think in Diamond and Barr's book, they, they start from the Stone Age. So I don't know how, the data, how good the data is on those, but here is from 1900 to, to you, unequivocally, the, the survival functions move up, move, move across. That's clearly. Uh, uh, and this will this will entail an increase in in uh, in uh, in life expectancy. Uh, by the way, I, you will see that the longevity and one of the issues I'll, I'll come to it again is that life expectancy, as most empirical studies have done, taking life expectancy, the dependent variable being aggregate savings, and showing that increases in life expectancy have a very significant effect on this. I want to show that life expectancy is not a sufficient statistic to predict what individual will do and therefore and, and anyway a more uh, a different one is this conditional on, on arriving at retirement excuse me this is the distribution these are just the distribution of survival of, of uh, mortality tables in different countries but, but in the us in estimated. the us you see you said for the social security population but that that's what they took it i think this this was taken out by uh, in diamond bar from the social security data yeah. yes What, 100 percent that you live at the at birth? Well, it starts at retirement is 60. It was 65 or something. Earlier. Right. This is not. This is not conditional on reaching 65. No, it aggregates everything. The whole, the whole, the whole. Yes, it aggregates everything. You'll see. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. That's. No, I'll I'll be talking about that exactly. Of course, this this is aggregating everything. Just looking at tables. You look at the cohort by age. You can see it in the national in 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 in, in every country has these these mortality tables or the survival tables. Some some people call it the rectangularization of of survival function. That so you know it becomes more and more like uh, uh, like uh, 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 the rectangle. Okay, so what I, what I would like to emphasize going back for a minute to this is. You can see already from this rough graph that clearly the trend is increased longevity, but it is an uneven trend. It's an uneven trend. And, and, and uh, you'll see later, I'll, I'll, I'll say something about this uneven trend from the survey by Cutler and others, David Cutler and so forth. So okay, it depends at what ages was the improvement. And, and I'll, I'll say something in a minute. So the savings rate, which I want to study today, is among the most studied macroeconomic area. Uh, according to life cycle model, people save when young and finance consumption during retirement. All this is standard. And here is a quotation from Bloom, Canning, and Graham. And there, there, there's another paper by Saxon, some of these, and, and the subset of these authors. In a stable population, the dissaving of the old should offset the saving of the young. And in fact, I would like to address that. That's what caught my, my attention at the time when I, when I, when I read that. Here is the a fuller quotation. So here's, uh, uh, while increasing longevity may increase the savings rate at every age, the effect on aggregate savings is transitory. 
increase in longevity implies that the stable aged structure has a higher proportion of the elderly and that in the long run the higher age-specific saving rates are offset by the greater number of elderly who are dissaving. This may take 50 years or more. They don't talk about the dynamics, but they think in the long run the effect of increased life expectancy on, in East Asia saving may be great, but our theory suggests that they will dissipate as the population ages. And that's, that's what I, I, I sort of get me going, uh, uh, got me going. I, I would like to um, say that uh, you will see, I think, A, I think their empirical studies have not, no bearing on what they say. They, it may, they, may, they may be right or wrong, but running regressions on aggregate savings on 68 countries and so forth, and inferring from this on the long run is, is from a cross-section, cross-country section is, is, is a jump. And, uh, and I would like to address the theoretical aspects of that. Okay. So the trends in mortality rates. Now I said Cutler and so forth. What's the history? The, the history is, is 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 very clear. And uh, uh, in 1700, life expectancy at birth in England was 37, and by 1820 it rose to 41 years. It's now about 77 in the U.S. Uh, uh, was at 1900 was 47, and then is now 78 today. 78 is the, is the life expectancy at birth. And as, as Professor Erro has just said, uh, uh, perhaps in most of the issues, we want the conditional probability of, say, at 65, the survival at 65. And, and this, this will bear, that's very important. It's, it's directly related to what I want to do. Bec for, for pension issues, for example, the, the conditional probability is, is very important. But for other issues, is, uh, it's, it's the whole distribution is important. Uh, Allow me to digress for a second. I, I don't know. I hope it will not take my time. But there are issues. There's another issue and another paper which I, I left for perhaps if we'll have ten minutes at the end, which relates to another claim, which is related to longevity. People, the following puzzle has been raised. Uh, we see uh, that uh, li life expectancy is rising. Uh, education is, is is increasing. Education is increasing. And, uh, but people work shorter periods of time. So it, it would seem that people, in order to realize the returns to education, you would like to work longer. And in fact, people work shorter. Yeah, there's no question about these facts, about the facts. And this seemed to be a puzzle. Why do people invest in education and then retire so much earlier? So much earlier, <coughs> okay? And, and, uh, and uh, my answer to that, in that other piece, is largely, not to look at working years, but at the expected working years. In other words, working year, each year multiplied by the probability of survival in that year. And I claim, and you, if you look at the data, you'll see that, that if you take this weighted labor supply over that, you'll see it has increased, actually. That's, that's, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm saying, and, and I want to, that, anyway, that's not what I'm talking today. Um, so this, it just, addresses the issue that we have to look at survival functions also at the working age ages. It's a very different effect when the increase in the probability of survival is at the age in the early 20s, for education, for example, or in the late 70s or 80s. So this is the life expectancy at birth. The this is, I think this is the US. Yeah, this is data from the US. <coughs> so you'll see it's 60, 75. should say the, the, the average. I, I I thought that for for males, it's this is for males. I thought, but may, maybe it's an average. I know the the condition. The condition. I know the conditional. I don't know about the overall life expectancy, uh, but I know that the conditional life expectancy of males, <coughs> say 65 years old, is now 85, and for females, 89. The difference is still four years. Uh, but this this is, I think, the average. So, you see, here is here is the all cause mortality by age, and you will see here, you know, elderly, over 65, infants, less than 65, and so forth. The, the exact numbers do not matter. What I want to impress upon you is the fact that the, the improvements in life expectancies and in, in longevity were uneven in different times. And in fact, let me go back and, and say what I, I think, Cutler, 
gives large epochs sort of, of, of improvements in longevity. I would say, say well, there, at, the, at, the, at the beginning of the century, it was mainly infant mortality which went down. You see, at the early on, it's almost, it was almost eliminated in hospital, you know, and hygienic conditions and so forth. Then in the 50s and 60s, I jump, in the 50s and the 60s, the main improvement was in middle, in ages 50 to 60 or so. It's the cardiovascular revolution. And in recent uh, 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 decades, it was mainly at the, very, at the old and the very old ages. And that's another thing which I, perhaps I'll say at the end, something which I'm addressing now in some <laughs> other paper, that, that what I call the medicalization of, de of, of death. In other words, uh, people stay alive by being treated uh, in, by, in various ways in hospitals and, and, and other ways. and, and uh, and the result is, of course, that the U for example, the U.S., the Medicare is, is, is spending, I think, half of its budget on the last three years of life. It brings out other issues, which I'm not addressing today. It's about socially, <coughs> about the investment in that, in that and, and, and also about the quality of life, which, again, I will not, yeah, sorry. Yeah, which yeah. Is, you'll which, see. which I suppose supports what you said before about equal, people, who are, people of working age, of people of working age who, who are effectively working longer. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll, right. You'll, you'll, you'll see that. You'll see that in a minute. Some more of that. So this all cause mortality. You see here expected age at death. England and Wales, the same trend and the convergence. The convergence. Here's another phenomenon. You see the various ages, and and a convergence. There's not, again, the uneven pace of improvements for uh, different ages. Here again, the sources of the improvement. You see the infants, children 1 to 14, and so forth and so on. You see how it shifted, and, 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 uh, and, uh, and recently it is really the elderly, the, very, the elderly who, who, right, 65 plus, the major improvements. And, and it goes on, even sharper. So I'm saying that the facts are clear improvements in longevity, uh, uh, shifts in uh, survival functions, in other words, and uneven over time. And we'll have to address that if we want to talk about what does it do to savings and to other things. Because, again, I remind you, typically in our life cycle models, the elderly are dissaving. And if they live longer and so forth, what, what does it do to aggregate savings? This is, this is the question that has been debated and has you saw the statement by, in the literature. Infectious diseases, the cardiovascular diseases, you see again, I think this is from Cutler and so forth, you see again the, the uneven trend. So what were they, I think I'm not going through these empirical studies, just give you a flavor of what the, these guys did. It's, it's typically uh, ordinarily squares or with country dummies and, and the dependent variable being aggregate savings. And then among the explanatory variables will be life expectancy. Now they, they took into account that life expectancy may not have a linear effect, so there will be a third degree polynomial and, and the square and the, and the cubed and so forth. And they'll, the, the, these, these are the, the coefficients. I, I won't go into it, I just wanted to give you a, here you have the age effect. All this is very significant. All, all, the, all these parameters turned out to be in this cross-country regressions. I think they use 60 plus 68 countries uh, uh, regressions is, is very, is, is very is, is significant. And, and this is a, a standard claim in by, 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 by quite a number of economists that say the, the, the explanatory, the exp one of the, uh, perhaps a major explanation for the growth for the, uh, of the tiger, the tiger countries, the far eastern countries, is the increased life expectancy. And as these authors said, yes, it, perhaps it is, and it, it is in their regressions, but they said this will dissipate. In the long run, this is going to go away. Yeah, 68 countries you see here, 1960 to 1994, 410 observations. Statistically, it's all, I have nothing to say. I, uh, that, that's, I looked at that, it seems right. I just think that they, the conclusions they, uh, that they drew from, the, from what they saw in their results is not warranted uh, at this stage. They may be right, but 
it needs more explanation. And that's, I would like to do that. Intercept, country dummies, time dummies. I'll, I want to jump here. So this is the relation. You see it. It's a positive relation. Fixed effect, which means country dummies and, and other things. The relation is positive. And here you see the age distribution, longevity, and age structure in the world. You see the, 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 the rise of the fraction of the elderly and the decrease of the fraction of the young. And this raises the question then about, it seems to be that there will be several uh, opposite <coughs> contradictory effects. The young are the ones who save, the elderly are the ones uh, are uh, dissaving. There's, there are also issues of the, the, the labor supply and retirement and so forth, decision, individual decisions. And then we have to build and then we have to see the, uh, to close the model to see the, the effect of longevity on, 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 uh, on the age distribution. Now I'll, you'll see, I, 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 I'm not talking too much about the dynamics, but I'll talk about steady state with increased in longevity. Sort of. So in other words, when longevity survival functions will shift in some way, there will be a transition and, and you'll see uh, mathematical demographers, uh, population theorists in particular, I, I, it's Ansley Cole who did it before the computers. So th this is a little, it's messy, but you can calculate it. But the steady state population theory is, is, is really crisp and, and clear and you'll see, I'll, I want to use it. So savings rate and, and the fitted value is very good, what they do, and that, that's, that's it. So now we get to theory. So the, the elements of the theory, the primitives of the theory are survival functions. Fz is the survival to Hz. Zero is, zero you can imagine as the age of 20 or whatever, the relevant age, okay, zero. And you have a, and, and, and naturally then the, f of zero is one, in other words, the planning, at the planning stage you're alive, you plan, and, uh, and, and it's decreasing, whether it's strict or not, it doesn't matter, it can be also weakened, this. The example is this function here, whose special case will be the exponential when cap t, cap t is the maximum lifetime, okay? When I tell my students this, I, I quote from Genesis 27, I think, it says, in the days of Methuselah, were 960 and nine years. Now it was 969 years, and then he died. So I take capital T as 969. Okay, that's that. that. that uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's that. Yeah. Um, so the exponential, and and, and it's, it's always easy to work with the exponential. A special case of this. Life. Uh, that's the way it looks. These functions. The one I showed you had, had the finite T, capital T is maximum lifetime. The exponential does not. It doesn't matter. From the, for the theory, it, it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. No problem. And, and life expectancy, which I denote by Z bar, is simply, as you know, the integral of the distribution function. And it's 1 over alpha with a correction factor. With the exponential, it's exactly Z bar is 1 over alpha, which gives us a, uh, perhaps a sense of what it is. So if Z bar is, say, 80, then alpha will be the parameter alpha will be 1 over 80, which is what, 0.013 or something. Okay, so it gives you a sense of what the values of these parameters are. Now, some elements which come up in the theory and in the individual behavior theory is the hazard rate, which again, you, 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 I'm sure you are familiar with it. And this is the conditional probability of dying at, at Hz. In other words, conditional in the sense that you were you survived to Hz. This is the, the denominator, f of z, and then f of z, the density of one over f, one minus f z, is the probability of dying. Okay, dying. So this is the conditional probability of dying at Hz. Okay, and uh, so here's yeah the definition of small f z, and and um, this this will be used. You'll see it, it is crucial. And uh, the utility of consumption, standard assumptions, labor disutility, I'll assume separable, and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and the disutility of work, which uh, I denote by easy, increasing with age. Okay? And now expected. Of 
Z, capital F of Z. Indeed. The focus of what I'm going to talk today is exactly about the trend in F of Z. It, it's not here yet. It's coming in a very general way. And the question is, who is doing it? By the way, talking now about practical issues, why pension funds and, and insurance companies and those who issue their annuities and so forth, of course, need to have these projections. And, do they, and they factor it in. And no question, they do it. And, and whether they do it imperfectly, they do it imperfectly. There's no question. They, 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 and, and there's always this question, why don't they, why, why do they always err they, uh, to underestimate the improvements in longevity because they save and, and then they change parameters. And I mean, if, you, if there are systematic errors downwards in the, in the increase in longevity, uh, then you could make corrections. And, and anyway, but, but that's another issue, you'll see. So this is expected utility, and you'll see here, you, right? This is the expected utility. I assume no discounting, no time preference. In a minute, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce it. We all know what happens when you do it. And I'll also assume no, uh, uh, no return, zero return on non-annuitized assets, as you'll see in a minute. And all this is immaterial, absolutely immaterial. We know how to, make, uh, to, to modify that. R is the age of retirement. So you see, I model retirement in a stark, in a, in a, in a one zero way. Uh, because otherwise, in modeling, what does it mean retiring? If you, you work half time, is that retirement or, and so forth. So, and, and by the way, factually, half the people in the US retire for half time, retire gradually. So I, I'm not, I'm not bragging of, of the half, half, half the people retire part time. Not immediately full time, but part time. It relates, of course, to some extent with the rules for the Social Security of what you lose when you work up to a point. There's a ceiling, there's a tax, taxation on working and so forth. And all these I don't want to go in. In the modeling, I think it's a one zero decision of retiring and separably, and separable utility of labor. Um, well, isn't it just the utility of working possibly with age related? Excuse me? The, the, is this the utility of working yeah. maybe age related? Yeah, well, this. But, the E should be in there in the yeah more general utility U of C and E, and then then it uh, and Z and Z and Z C of Z the the, the enjoyment of consumption the consumption utility well, is age related. It is age dependent. E of Z E of Z is age dependent. No, the, the, uh, the, the interaction you want the interaction. Yes, first of all, I don't have hours of work, so this is just working, non-working, okay? And you, can, you, you probably would take care of that by a more general function of U of C and E, right? U of C and E. And, and this would only change the fact that at retirement, consumption may be discontinuous. Given, given my choice of retirement, non-retirement, one zero choice, then retirement there will be a jump in consumption. All these are not essential, I think. All these are not essential. Yeah, you're right. And if I would have labor supply more flexible, it could be, this is not essential. Yeah, I have. So E of Z is increased. E of Z, as I, a minute ago I put in previously on, is, is, is increasing. E prime is positive. So because I want people to work in the early areas, uh, parts of life. And, and once they retire, they will not return to the working force and so forth. Simplifying, but I think reasonable assumptions at this level of abstraction that we are doing. Okay, now I have annuities. I denote by AZ, the annuity is held at HZ. The dynamic budget equation is, is the following then. <coughs> I'm sorry. R of Z is the return on annuities at HZ. And, and uh, A of Z is the, is the stock. WZ is the wage of at HZ. And CZ is the consumption. And this is the dynamic budget. So the accumulation or decumulation of annuities is A, A, A dot. And... Uh, um, uh, and R is the instantaneous rate of return on annuities. You'll see in a minute how it is determined. So here is the work by Yari and 65, and uh, and uh, and when the only uncertainty is, is longevity, then then people should uh, put all their savings. And it's already clear before I go into the equations why annuities are superior to any other type to non-annuitized assets, because annuities can always give you a return idealized return, which is higher than a non-annuitized asset because the firms who issue the annuities, the insurance firms, can of course invest in the market and get the return, the real return on non-annuitized assets, plus 
a fraction of those who have bought the annuities expire during those, that period, then they can give that, they can, in a competitive market, this will be added to the return. In fact, I think that's, I'm surprised that not all pension funds have this rule that those who are, who are, uh, who, 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 who die in a, of a certain age cohort, their assets are not distributed among the others be, and, uh, by promising a higher return to everybody, right, during life. That's a sensible policy. And some do. Some do. Now, you, you, you saw the dynamic equation. That's then the holdings of annuity is just find the solution. The solution to that is this one. And, the, and, and now I, uh, I, I, I state that the, uh, the equilibrium, the competitive rate of return on annuities is the hazard rate under my assumption. Otherwise, if there would be a, a return on non-annuitized assets, then uh, it would be the, non the rate of return on non-annuitized assets plus the hazard rate. Okay, but I assume zero. So that's the hazard rate is the rate of return on annuities. And, and uh, so with the transversality condition that you have here, in other words, towards the end of life, if, if, if it is infinite, you, uh, uh, you, uh, you don't hold any annuities. This is actually, when you take in this definition of how do you show that this is indeed the competitive rate of return on annuities? When you plug this in, rate of return, this is the logarithmic derivative of fantasy. You plug it into this constraint and you, the, the logarithmic derivative, you see that this is it. That's basically the resource constraint. This is the competitive, that's the no zero profit, expected zero profit constraint. Expected consumption is equal to expected wages, national income. And that's, that's the, the competitive rate of return on annuities. Um, and you optimize, given this budget constraint, and you see that the optimum, given my simplified assumption, consumption is steady. C star. Yeah, I was going to say, well, doesn't the opportunity for investment play any role here? Other, other investments. I said other investments give a return of zero. Oh, oh, oh. I assume, okay. I assume that. If they would give a return, they then, then uh, uh, again, for individuals, individual, then the rate of return on annuities would be, suppose the rate of return on other, in a minute, well, I'll, I'll do a modification that, suppose it's rho, then the rate of return on annuities is rho plus this r, plus the hazard rate. I'm just saying the r -E theorem is always true in the sense that annuities dominate in the competitive market, dominate the other, the other investments. But you're right, of course, if there are, there's a return on non-annuitized assets, then, then uh, it's, it's, but annuities dominate other types. Excuse me, yes. At the end, I said no bequest motive. No bequest motive, I didn't put it in. I'll talk later about that. Maybe I should say a word about that because tomorrow I'll say something about life insurance. It's another aspect of the annuity market which I think has not been, we in public economics have not paid enough attention. The interaction between life insurance and and uh, and and uh, and annuity and pension issues, savings savings for pensions. Be, uh, um, in the following way, first of all, these are simultaneous decisions. And in principle, I argue, and, and or let me backtrack and say, there are different types of annuities. Uh, uh, Okay, I'm jumping here to more. This, these are simple annuities. There are annuities which are uh, called 10-year uh, certain annuities and 20-year certain annuities, TIA, CREF. This is the most uh, uh, favorite type of, uh, of uh, annuities that people choose in TIA, CREF. And th these, these are the professors and teachers supposed to know what they're doing. But uh, uh, what are 10-year certain annuities? These are annuities which have a bequest option. They are saying, say, 10-year certain, say, 10 years, if 10 years after your retirement you die within the first 10 years, your spouse or designated beneficiaries will get the remainder of those 10 years. And that's, so it's a bequest option. But it's a bequest option, with a ra it's a random bequest option. Because how much your, the, your spouse and, or, or whoever, the designated beneficiary of the remainder of the time, if you died after five years, the rest, the five years, designated beneficiary will receive. And if you died after 10 years, then nothing, okay? So uh, it's a random bequest option, and the, it seems that, and I think this, this makes sense uh, on the face of it, that this would do be dominated by buying life insurance, which is a certain bequest, and simple annuities. Of course, the, 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 the benefits of 10-year of, uh, certain annuities is adjusted actuarially, 
by the firms for the probability of people who die within the first 10 years to the bequest options. These are all equilibrium values. And it seems that the, um, that the portfolio of life insurance and simple annuities dominates whatever your characteristic, personal characteristic longevity is by uh, uh, then, then buying uh, these 10 year certain uh, annuities, which is actually the most frequent type of insurance, a uh, type of financial instrument purchased in TIA Correct. My explanation as you'll see is, is that this is true if in, in a first best world, but in a, in a, in a, with, with adverse selection and asymmetric information, when annuities are sold at the, at the uniform price, at, at the given price to everybody, then the, maybe the people who are short-lived know that they are short-lived. The firm sells it at a given price, they cannot identify who is who. Those who are short-lived may have an interest in buying the 10-year certain annuities because they can beat the average because the 10-year, the, 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 the calculations are based on the average in the population. So there will be a, there will be a self-selection. I'm jumping ahead on other th issues, but, but uh, anyway, that's the, so life insurance and bequests, I think are best addressed, if I come back, are best addressed at the elementary level, but I said then we have to, uh, at, by, by life insurance and simple annuities. And, uh, and, uh, and by the way, also for, for the issues that I want to talk to more about residual, if you get inf information uh, uh, that, that, that you would like to sell some of your life insurance later on in life, you purchased an, a, pre, uh, uh, a policy uh, early on and then you would like to sell or add on to that policy, these markets exist. Unlike with annuities, which is interesting, there's the market that is called the viatical market where you can sell your life, ins your, your, your life insurance. The firm actually takes on some of the payments for life insurance if it hasn't paid fully, and they receive then the, uh, the, premium, the, the premium when you die. That this market exists. And I, uh, about anyway, all this takes me away from. I'm already going away from. So C, C is C, C is uh, constant consumption that comes out from the no discount rate, no time preference, and zero rate of return. Otherwise, it will return. It will depend on the difference between the two, and it is indeed the expected wages divided by life expectancy. And there's another equation that determines the uh, retirement age. And again, it makes sense because it equates the marginal benefit of postponing retirement a little bit, which is the first term. WR is the, is the wage that you earn at R star when you retire times the marginal utility of that. So that's what we'll get if, by postponing a little bit your retirement, the marginal benefit. And the second term minus is the, the additional effort that you make. and, and that's a condition for the optimality of the retirement age. So these are two equations which determine C and R star. Okay, standard, a little bit of assumptions that they will, will be unique and so forth, that they intersect in, in an interior point and, and it's, it's all fine. And therefore the savings rate, the personal savings rate, S star, will be, you can see, is the wage minus the consumption during the working phase of life and will be this saving, the C star, uh, during retirement. Okay, that's the, m the, s the most, the simplest life cycle model with retirement R. I want to address for a minute or so an issue of the asymptotic R star because it really, it's a, it's a central issue for all, for social security systems. You see now, all countries, including the US, are postponing now the, uh, the normal age of retirement. In the US, it's called the normal age of retirement. In the UK, it's different. So. Uh, uh, so the question is, what would the individual? What is the individual's desire the, from a welfare point of view? What? How does R star change the the, the 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 chosen age of retirement? How does this change when longevity changes? So now now let's revert for a minute to a positive time this uh, uh, time preference delta and a positive return on non annuitized assets, and. This is now the, the objective function. This is not the constraints. You see where, where, where I built in the return rho and the time preference delta. And this is now consumption. is not constant anymore. You all know this, the, this formula, how to solve that. Uh, uh, the individuals now, it's either increasing or decreasing depending on the difference between rho and delta. And, and where sigma is the coefficient of relative risk aversion, right? Evaluated at the optimum path, on the optimum path. Okay, that's, that's, that's standard. Now, take an, suppose the individual lives for sure until age t, 
capital T, okay? Just for just for to have an example. And then when rho and delta are positive, I want to address the issue what happens when T is increasing and goes to large numbers. And I'm saying that basically the result the proposition is that you, we don't know. It depends on um, it depends on the utility. And here is the example. An example is, suffices for this the kind of statement. Is I take, I take uh, a constant uh, uh, disutility of labor, and I take a constant wage, and I, take these, and I take these to be equal, time preference and rate of return, so consumption is constant. This will be the condition that will determine R star. Okay? In particular, when they are 0, this will be the condition to E star. Let's go to a picture. This is the picture of R star. So you see, it may, it may reach an asymptote. And, and R, R bar, when both are positive, equal and positive, just an example. Or if both are zero, it will increase proportionately to, the, to T, to life expect, to here life, life expectancy, lifetime. You live for sure until the capital T. So we can't say for sure. Uh, but that's an issue which also has, has great interest, you know, now that all, these co all countries are facing the issues of longevity and postpone, and postpone the retirement age in Social Security, the question is, where is it going? So you see from the individual interest point of view here, at least, you see it depends. We, we can't say for sure. Now changes in longevity. Finally, I come to the issue. And I, the way I model it, I put in, in the survival function, a parameter alpha. And, and from, from the exponential was, was the natural choice. And uh, repre represents, in this, in the se and this is longevity in the sense that, and I choose that, the f the alpha is negative because the exponential e to the minus alpha z, an increase in alpha decreases longevity. So I took, some people don't like that, so if you don't like the, the sign, but it is just a convention. I, I choose that an increase in alpha decreases longevity, okay? You'll all remember, it's really not intentional to, to confuse, but that's, so stand over your head and, yeah, anyway. Um, you see, the function, for example, uh, the function that I chose before was the finite t. Was the finite t? The, the, this is two parameters, alpha and capital T, alpha and capital T, which have very different effects on. Oops, sorry. They have different effects. The alpha, an improvement in a, a, a decrease in alpha, a decrease in alpha, which is increasing longevity, which on the left hand side increases longevity, particularly in the Middle Ages. In fact, it doesn't affect it at all at the, at the maximum age, at capital T. On the other hand, an increase in capital T, keeping alpha constant, increases very, at, at older ages. These are all turn out to be rather crucial, and in a minute I'll talk about it more generally. So now you see with these survival functions, the, 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 time, the age pattern of the changes in longevity will play an important role on individual savings, behavior, retirement, and, and everything else. And here is these, these are just examples. Now I define a term which is the relative improvement of longevity at different ages on the survival probability. That's the mu. Given the way I defined the f the alpha being negative, it's on the negative quadrant, but the shape of it will be crucial, as you'll see. So what is mu again? It's the proportional improvement of uh, survival at age z. Mu of z is the proportional improvement of survival at age z. And this picture says, in a way, it says that improvements are mainly in older ages rather than young ages. It's, okay, it's one pattern, could be any pattern, but this is, and that's the pattern we've seen recently, in recent decades in history, but you'll see that this will be a sufficient condition for various results, which I'm going to quote later on, okay? So mu, again, is the improvement. It's a function of z and alpha, and, and uh, um, uh, this pattern says simply uh, that the improvements are mainly in, at all the ages, which is equivalent to saying that the hazard rate increases with alpha for all z. By the way, for the exponential, the hazard rate is constant.
I haven't said anything. What the alpha, the effect of alpha on behavior? I haven't said anything, but, but I'm coming to it. There yes. Are, but there, are, there have been other important changes over the, over the time, such as changes in, in wages and wage pattern. Uh, is, it, is it of interest to, to look at how that interacts with? Uh, yeah, wages are changing, but do you think why why is that essential for this analysis? Seeing how I want to focus on the effect of longevity on savings, increase in wages. If, if, if the two has, are happening uh, at the same time, it may be that the I'm not talking about any empirical, how to differentiate empirically between when you run regressions, you should put in also the wages, the income that people have at different, if different age, a time series or so. But yeah, uh, but essentially for the comparative static steady states that I'm doing, I hold wages constant. You, you would like a a co-movement of wages and longevity, unless you assume that there is some inherent what relation between longevity and wages. But if wages were increasing over time. Over time, yes. yes. But then they would be for uh, Yeah, then no, this wages increasing over time. For the individual planning, this would be no problem, I think, in the sense that I could put in the budget constraint for the individuals that an expectation, a self-realized expectation about, about increasing wages and so forth. Yeah, but I, I, I yeah, uh, yeah. I, um, think, I think the worry might be that the, the wage effect might swamp the, the long, longevity effects, or at least in principle they could, in, in which case looking at that exercise might be... What it, why would they? they I, I thought they would reinforce each other. I, increased longevity <coughs> will, for example, as, as you'll see in a minute, is, 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 uh, people will tend to divide the increased longevity between uh, lengthening the working phase and lengthening the, the, the retirement uh, period, both. If life expectancy is increasing by a year, say, typically people will say, I'll work longer for half a year and also retire half a year more. This will be typical under some assumptions. It's not necessar necessary, but it's, it's reasonable. Now, if, I, if you increase wages also, it will have, it will have an, I think, the same kind of effect now that you will, you will actually, you will you have a maybe an incentive to postpone your retirement. You have higher wages, depending also at what ages these, this, impre this improvement happens. And, all, and, and uh, there will be an income effect also on my, re on re and, and the increasing the retirement, also a division. I, I, I'm not sure it will go in opposite directions. Well, it, it but partly depends on the wage pattern. That's right, on the wage pattern by age. I agree. I agree. Anyway, I'm not. I'm not talking about that. Excuse me. The, 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 in what way? If you use log, if you use log say. Right. 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 But in fact, I wanted not to confine myself to, to the log necessarily. But yeah, you're right. So here's the proposition that an increase in longevity, incre under, under the assumption that the, mu that the improvements in longevity are monotone, it's a sufficient condition that is monotone, weakly monotone, in, uh, uh, in age, in age, then individuals, an increased longevity, I think this is the intuitive uh, hypothesis, is that indeed it's borne out that you will increase, a decrease in alpha, which means increased longevity, will postpone retirement, and uh, increase and, and decrease consumption, and decrease consumption. See, what people do, the, the intuition behind it is as longevity increases, you have to stretch. If you, if you, if you, keep, if you keep retirement constant, this blanket must, must suffice for a longer <laughs> period. So if you keep that, you need, I'm using words, a drastic reduction in consumption. So people to mitigate that kind of effect will postpone the retirement and so it will be divided. Consumption will nevertheless decrease when you increase longevity. And to mitigate the decrease, the necessary decrease in during the retirement, to stretch it over the longer period, and will postpone retirement thereby. That, that's, that's a standard. But you need this assumption. Now, it may happen also without this assumption. It's a sufficient condition. But it makes sense. OK? But the utility is increasing. Concavity here will ensure that lifetime is increasing with alpha. Okay, that's always the case. Again, I, I'm emphasizing I, in my utility, there's nothing about. I talked about the quality of life, medicalization of death. I think 
that that's a real a real issue about the, the the what does it do to welfare to individuals welfare when if 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 things if if investments if as as we as we see as we witness in recent decades that the uh, in, the improvements in longevity are in older ages and the issue of quality of life I'm just saying has to be addressed and and in another I'm I'm working now on the issues of when you can well alpha is a choice variable you can invest in increasing longevity and you have some resources to invest what ages would you like to invest in what is sort of an optimal policy of in, of, of medical care and so forth then all these issues cannot be uh, brushed aside quality quality of life and so forth um, Yeah. In that last sentence, though, it's very interesting. Uh, do, you, do, you not, do you require the introduction to the outcome specific? Uh, it has the origin of the utility function in the study of life. I don't think so. The only thing that I did is, is behind it is that the utility after death is zero. That is, that is, that is, that is, that is, that in that sense, yes, the answer is yes. That's, that's the cardinalization, yes, yes. That's, that's a, you're right, you're right, definitely, right. Now here comes the population theory coming in. I, I, I'm moving to aggregate, so uh, let's call the population growth rate G, and the steady state age density I call HZ of alpha and G, so it's, the, the, that's the age density function. And I claim it is this function. In a minute, we'll, we'll work on this to, to prove that, to show you in a minute, where M is the birth rate, OK, is the birth rate. In a minute, it will become clear in, in a slide or two. The second, the second equation, population theory equation, which I need for steady state, is this one here. And where BZ is the fertility, the age-specific fertility rate, OK? For women of uh, age Z, okay, that's and that's equal to one. I'll prove in a minute. It will come. Where does this equation come from? In a minute, okay. But that's the second equation for steady state population density. I have to relate if I want to close everything in steady states, comparative steady states. I need. I need all. Everything is endogenous, including the R and so on, building on individual behavior. So where where do I get all this from? Um, it's basically the last line here. BZ is the age-specific thing. So let's let's just see what 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 it is. So n of z, the numerator, is simply the so h of z, the density, is simply the ratio between the talking about one gender, the females, uh, n of z, the the number of females of age z, uh, divided by the total number. Okay, and you see in the numerator what is this? The number of females z periods back is n to the e to the minus g z. And M is the number of females who were born at that time. The M is the birth rate. And those who survive now to the present are FZ of alpha. That's the numerator. OK? And so that's, that's what it is. And given, that, given the definition of a, of a density, this, this gives you what I had before about the, the birth rate. OK? So substituting this in, you have the, 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 the equation that I had before this equation here. So this will even eventually, this will be determined the G, the population growth rate. I like this, this kind of theory also because we have the growth rate is endogenous. It depends on the longevity and the alpha and so forth. We, in growth theory, this was a target to have endogenous growth. We talked yesterday about the AK models and so forth. This is something which I, I like in the modeling. Okay, I remember when is itself. B of C is the choice variable? Well, I think if you would be religious, perhaps not. But no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. B of C could be. It is a choice variable. Right, right, right. The, the age specific fertility. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. We can. Here it's taken as given. Okay. You'll see also later I'll need, I'll have an assumption about B of C that it is to get, to get a theorem about aggregate savings that B of C is non increasing. And given that zero, my zero in the model is, is age 20, it makes sense. But all these are sufficient conditions. So, you know, other things can, can, can also be 
be satisfied. You know, you'll do empirical work, you'll see that B of Z is not monotone, decreasing, uh, weakly monotone in, in by age, and, and it may still, the result may still hold. So, anyway. Um, now, you look at that equation, and you see that the relation between uh, an, uh, uh, increased longevity raises the steady state growth rate. That you just do that, and, and implicitly, and you have. It it's, could be a complicated thing, but in special cases, like this one, in the exponential, it's, it's what you would expect. If B is constant, for example, if B is constant, BZ, the fertility, the age-specific fertility rate is constant, and F is co exponential, the, the survival function, then you get the G, the growth rate, is simply the difference between the birth rate and the mortality rate. And therefore, the relation is minus 1. Is that 1 to 1? 1% 1 increased longevity increases growth rate by percent. But in general, it's the upper... And how can you get a steady state zero population growth out of this model? Excuse me? Why? G could be zero. I didn't, I did, I, I, zero was solved from the... We, we started out discussing state generic. You mentioned before state generic. Everything here is, is everything is steady state. I mean, this argument about the effect of savings and longevity. Yeah. The, origin, the, as you the effect of longevity on savings. The effect of longevity on savings, yes. But the, but the, it, it was a statement about the people you were quoting. It was saying, well, what happens in stationary? They said stable population. I can go back to the first one. If you want to interpret as sta as 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 stagnant, stagnant, st you know, I, I understand. The intuition tells me there be more young people in the growth rate. The the intuition that why there are more intuition that a higher growth rate produces higher savings because there are more young people working than people retired. Yeah, but let's let okay, let's let, let's talk about the intuition. I, I think it's important. So. Okay. When you take salsa, yes. you determine G for the other state. Yes. Yes. G is a function of alpha. Yes. That is an effect. And yes. that will say yes. function of alpha. Yes. Okay. Right. right. Indeed. Indeed. But I want to, what Professor what you were just saying. What's, what, where is the is the intuition? You're right. As as you'll see uh, in in a few minutes what, what goes on. But let's let's talk about it. Um, when alpha decreases, which means increased longevity. You're right. The, the growth rate will be affected, as I as I had a minute ago. The growth rate is affected. The, a higher growth rate means in the density, it, 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 there will be a high fraction of of younger people. Uh, okay, a higher. But remember also that in terms of individual behavior about savings, it depended on the what happens to the hazard rate, to the to the hazard rate, to the mu, to the mu, to the improvements. Where are the improvements? Okay. So first, I have to establish how do individuals behave when alpha changes, and and. I'll have, I'll have conditions on that. And I'm saying that there are two counter sort of uh, uh, arguments, and you have to, you need conditions that, it's a little delicate, but you need conditions that will give the result that savings goes up. Because at the individual level, I said the improvements are mainly in older ages. These are the ages where individuals this save. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. okay? They're this save. So you have the two effects the increased fraction, the weight of younger people in the population density. On the other hand, the effect on individual uh, dissaving at older ages. And you need condition that one will outweigh the other. Anyway, I'm just anticipating here a condition for the theorem. The end result is what you said. You had already the intuition that that's the outcome? Yes. Savings can increase. If you think that they meant only for a stable population that the result dissipates, okay, fine. I, the only thing I, wanted to show, I will show now is that, that, that um, with positive growth rate G, uh, an increase in longevity under the conditions that we have made, all these conditions, plus then uh, aggregate savings will increase. Steady state, steady state. I'm, I don't know about the transition, how fast, how, so I have nothing to say about that. But the steady state aggregate savings increases with longevity under these assumptions. But in some cases, it may go the other way around. If I would have assumed a, an opposite way for mu and other conditions, it may go the other way around. So anyway. The growth rate will rise. So you'll have more younger people. Yeah, I told Taking a broader point of view, and I let's say you worry about things like sustainability. Yes. You do feel population is going to acid I don't 
don't know. You think population will last? In other words, the growth rate will go, go to zero, go to zero, because the world is finite and so forth. Europe is decreasing. The United States has got a steady, got to a, roughly a, apart from immigration, has got a steady state. Is already in a steady state situation, potentially steady state situation. And okay. you know, you, 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 obviously, the consequences of, uh, of exponential population growth are impossible. The Earth is not in. And indeed, yeah. indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah. But we'll, but can it? We will. Yeah, we will live in other spaces too. Why only the Earth? There's a related question here. Is I'm still in the old school of exponential growth and steady states. Uh, for any choice of G, for any choice of G is endogenous, not I a know, choice. I, I right. Understand. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I don't know. I You're using the force of population growth to drive your result. And I'm suggesting oh. that by continuity, you might be able to suggest that even without growth. OK, it's not only G is endogenous, but everything else is also endogenous there. The retirement age, the consumption, everything, the, the building blocks. That's why I did the whole thing. Ev everything is sort of built. Okay. You, first, you first have to say something about individual behavior when alpha changes. Well, I think what we're saying is that B is B. somehow is not a it's not exogenous. This is not. B is exogenous here. The fertility rate. Yeah, no, no, I will not argue about it. Yes, yes, yes. Economic circumstances. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. No, I have nothing. Yes. Well, it will be. Bees, bees, bees. See, what you're saying is that the higher savings rate with, the, with an improvement in mortality is accompanied by a higher population growth rate. Yes, yes, and yes, that's, that's yes. That's what's bothering me. I see. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, OK. Well, maybe maybe the B. Yeah, OK. That's, well, everything was laid out explicitly, so you can. There were no rabbits here or anything. Yeah. So, OK, that's. So this is no. First of all, uh, that that um, S is positive. This is uh, okay. It's aggregate savings are positive when when you have growth. That that's obviously. And now, here a section is is, is has been has been somehow uh, I forgot here one section about two assumptions. One is that B Z. I have two assumptions which are not laid out explicitly, and it is that that. Um, uh, BZ is monotone non-increasing. I think there will be no argument about that. Uh, and the other is that the improvements in life expectancy, which you remember, I needed a more, more, more uh, to be focused and more weight and 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 to be concentrated in some way in the older ages will not be too much. I told you these are two effects now on the aggregate. I need them so the elasticity of the mu respect. I, I didn't lay it out. There's some condition. Okay, to get this balance. It's a delicate condition. And then you get the result that the SD alpha is negative. Aggregate savings. So everything is now endogenous. Yeah, by the way, this uh, capital S, you saw where uh, we built it. Everything is endogenous. The consumption, the retirement age, and personal savings. And, the, and then the, the, and the density, the age density. So it's really comparative steady states. Okay, that's the result of what happens, comparative steady states. Here's the exponential. You get the result. This is This is... 
So, um, um, so everything and you can even sign the elasticities, and these are these are, and I have examples here, and uh, and here is an explicit example where you calculate the s, and uh, and uh, and again. The S, the alpha is negative. In other words, a decrease in alpha and increased longevity increases aggregate savings. So I, in that sense, what I refuted, what, it, what they have meant. One thing, though, I, I, I want to restate. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Their empirical regressions do not bear on this question in the long run, on the long run. Okay? And, and that's, that's what I was after. You had some questions? No, on a weak, mono weak monotonicity. What? Weak monotonicity. B should not should be a weakly decreasing with age. The the fertility rate. It should be weakly decreasing with age. Yeah. From twenty to fifty. Huh? From the age of twenty. Yeah. Well. Yes. 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 Doesn't work anymore. Yeah, the battery is over. You're right. Just save the money. <laughs> Long run. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh, so, so annuities can be positive or negative. I didn't point that out, but indeed, if we think about that, what what I had, annuity was an as was a was a financial instrument, which was contingent on survival, the return. Okay, and that's why I got these the hazard rate and the rate of return on annuities. But I'm saying it could be also be negative. I didn't have a con any constraint on that. And, and one example is, is, is credit cards, right? We, have, we, have, we owe to uh, um, uh, the credit cards, and when we die, they don't go after our assets. It's, uh, it's factored in uh, to the return. So it's a contingent loan. You and people can get contingent loans. Uh, uh, in addition to credit cards, but anyway, that that's what the assumption. Now, if you have, if you assume that there are no annuities, then the modeling requires, presumably, uh, non-negativity of uh, of assets at any moment. If you if you impose the condition that you never die in, in debt. Okay, if there are no contingent assets like annuities, a natural condition will be that all. That asset. It doesn't mean that you cannot decumulate annuities, but your cumulative investments in annuities must never be, must always be non-negative. Okay, that's one one aspect which I'm not going to address, but I'm just saying it's there. I'll simply assume the non-negativity. And the other is more fundamental, which is the following. I assumed in this model no bequest motive, with no annuities you will have the issue of unintended bequests. You have no interest, but if you have non-negative assets and you may die you know, by survival function, 
any, any, any time you die, it's a capital T if it's finite, then uh, uh, you'll leave some assets. So at the individual level, you can just treat it that, that's and, and then do an individual model. But if you want a model which is closed in the economy, you have to say something, where does it go? Sort of a closing equation. Where do these assets transfer, basically? Uh, so you have, you have random bequests. And, and, uh, and, and then, and then basically you're in, in, a, in a situation of random, uh, of, of a random move, stochastic process over time, okay? How much I will have my initial, my initial uh, uh, budget will depend on when my parents died. If they died early, they'll leave a certain amount. If they died later, another amount, and so forth. So I'll have, so there will be, and, 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 then, and, 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 and then you'll have, you'll have ergodic, so you'll, have, you'll have some st steady state distribution of wealth depending on maybe uh, you know two of my ba back generations died early and so forth i'll just give an example a two period example of what is required here to have the it will have a steady state distribution of, of bequests so um, here is the, the, the so now this is the budget constraint which you see here you see the f doesn't appear here the This is now, this is not consumption, this is not constant anymore, it's decreasing, by the way, this gets always because consumption is decreasing from S to T, and by how much will depend on the relative risk aversion. Um, and consumption is here, and of course, you have everything you want is consumption. And you have this retirement, and you can ask questions, for example, does R hat now, which is retirement in the absence of an annuity market, how does R, R hat compare other things equal? How does R hat compare to R star in the, uh, in the presence of annuity market? You can, uh, the welfare effects are easily calculated. In other words, the welfare is the, is the utility equivalent. In other words, I can, I can always ask the simple question of what, what, what is the annuity market worth? That's the standard beginning question in this, in, in, in this world of annuities. In other words, you can talk about two individuals who have same utility, same, same, same survival function, and one has an access to a competitive annuity market and, and uh, has you know, an, an a certain wage pattern, and you calculate expected utility at the optimum, optimum utility, expected utility, say optimum. Then you can calculate um, for the person who has no access to an annuity market, calculate the optimum path, it's consumption and savings and so forth, and then you ask how much more money you have to give that individual in order to have to equalize their expected utility. See? Utility equivalent uh, money. And any calculation like that with the standard utilities we make will show the importance of the financial annuity market. If you make this kind of exercise with valuation of utility or anything, you'll see that you have to give people between a third and half addition to their assets to have the same expected utility. It's an important market. So here we are with the R hat, and, and I'm telling you again that it's, it's uh, in this case, if you think that R hat would be lower than 1 over alpha, not expected to be so. Um, and the unintended request issue, the unintended request issue is, and, and let me address this very briefly in the following way. Let's shift to a two period model. You'll see it's a, it's a very simple birth and death process because that's, you know, otherwise things become really complicated and I, I need separate, would be a separate lecture. So here's a, uh, people may live for one period or with a probability P for two periods, okay? Consumption C is first period, consumption C1 is second period, if alive, if alive. And here is the budget constraint with in the absence of annuities, yeah, no interest rate, no interest rate, sum of consumption equal to W plus B, B being initial bequest, initial endowment, okay? And you So here, here is for the logarithmic case. Here, yeah, the logarithmic case. Uh, you have these 
the C hat, the C hat, C1 hat, consumption first period, second period, depending on these probabilities. And now the bequest follows, bequests follow a renewal process. So B hat is the endowment of an individual who K periods, previous periods, the parents lived one period only. In other words, these are, this is an individual whose K generations back all lived one period and therefore left assets. And you can have this K could be one, two, and, s and so forth. Could be all of them, okay? We all have a distribution. So BK, you can calculate this BK, the initial endowment of uh, somebody who had, whose K previous generations lived one period only. That's the BK, that's the calculation. You can calculate it, you see the binomial. The rest is all, and, and you see the probability of BK is, of course, yeah, right, that you, you live, f that your parents died, died K p after first period K times, and then P0, the last time. Okay. Anyway, you, calc you calculate all these. I'm, I'm shortening it. This is all. It's not clear. This is now the savings, ac actual sa the ag aggregate savings. And the end result is that in the absence of an annuity market, there is you, you don't know what the result is. It can go either way. So annuities, are re for the result was based on the, the existence of an annuity market. And in the absence of an annuity market, we are really left for, could be all kind of other possibilities. But, yeah. Or negative, I said, or negative. Sorry, I wish I could have, I wish I'd had the definite result, but, uh, but uh, uh, yeah. I'm just saying every, everything without an, I just wanted to point out that the, the issue of unintended bequests, uh, because some people have done the individual model, is no problem. But closing the model when you have these, these unintended bequests, somebody's receiving those, the, the, those resources. So some of our authors, some of the literature is really, I, I, I don't like it. The government takes it and then divides it equally to, to avoid the, the, the technical difficulties. But no, not here. Oh, if you do, if you do. I said, if you care about your children, if you want bequest, it's, it's easy to take, take, let's go back to the original model. If you have a bequest motive, I said you have a bequest motive, the right thing to do is you buy in, uh, you buy life insurance. The way to do it, you have a hundred, you have a million dollars. You decide you want to bequeath your children two hundred thousand. You buy life insurance that will provide uh, two hundred thousand. With the eight hundred thousand, you buy annuities. Okay. Why? Excuse me. Oh, the timing, the timing, the timing. When I die. I'm sorry. No, but no, no. But you could you could have you could have a life insurance which is age dependent, when they get it. In other words, if my child is in college age, I know there's certain needs. If he or she is already 35 with 10 children, that's yeah. You could you could yeah, yeah right could also be. But I'm saying in theory, yes, see, we do theory here. Yeah, it, it could be yeah. I'm saying it's. No, no, no. But the policy that I buy, the insurance policy, can be contingent on when my children will get will receive that. Uh, that. No, but the, the, because you have to provide for your children. You, you can't make a purpose condition that they receive it at a certain age. Why? Because the, the insurance policy is contingent on the certain ages. Not the certain ages. Whatever, wh whenever I die, they'll receive something. But the amount that they'll get will depend on when I die. That can be all. That's a contract with the insurance company. It's no problem. It's uncertainty. it's uncertainty when they receive it. Yeah. When they no, I thought this can be this can this can be specified in the contract. I understand. I understand. In my utility, when when the utility of my children in my I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. Some on me, yes, 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 yes. 
Yes. Yeah. I th that's what I thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm I'm done for today. Thank you.